when this is your lifestyle and this is how you know you make your money and this is just like your main source of income you do have to like be more consistent with it because the times where i've had fallout with consistency i, I reap the repercussions <laughs> Today I'm interviewing a content creator named Ava Toklu, who's known for incorporating her humor and her culture into her fashion, beauty, and lifestyle content. So stay tuned to hear all about her journey on social media. Hey Ava. Hello. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm really excited to learn more about you and your journey as this really multifaceted creator. So you started making videos in 2019 when you were only 16 years old, right? Yeah. Yeah, and this was like pre-pandemic, like when mm -hmm. TikTok was really just beginning to grow. Yeah. So you really are one of like the original creators on that app. Yeah. And now you've grown over 2.7 million followers on all platforms. So how do you feel like your content and you as a creator have evolved since then? I think when I started content creation, it was just to like, Past time. It yeah. was just like, you know, picking up the phone, filming a video to procrastinate on my schoolwork because I was still in high school during this time. Mm -hmm. But I think now I started to actually like find my niche and like delve, like dig more into my interests because I started getting into fashion a little bit. So I was able to like make content that kind of steer away from like, you know, the funny skits and just kind of focused on them like, you know, my fashion and like, you know, how I style, put outfits together, even like, you know, beauty, lifestyle, every mm -hmm. time I travel, go somewhere, little vlogs and stuff. So it definitely like, I started to take it more serious. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You're signed with Kensington Gray, which right. is an influencer agency yeah. catered towards black and brown creators, mm -hmm. right? So it's definitely one of the best agencies to be signed to. Their roster is incredible. And I think a lot of the most successful creators of color belong to Kensington Gray. So can you tell us the story of how you got yeah. signed with this agency? So I think this was like, I want to say either 20, I think it was 2021. And I was on live, you know, Instagram live with Sophie as we was always going live, like almost every day or yeah. every week. And I saw someone in the comments that was like, oh, check your DMs, check your DMs. And I was like, who is this? <laughs> I was like, I don't know who this is. Like, I was ignoring it. And then Sophie went on her on her iPad and she looked up uh, the Instagram. She's like, Oh, Ava, it's a major company. And, the, and then it was Shanae. She was like, No, I got a good, like a good, like you know, opportunity. Like, just DM me back. I was like, Okay, let me let me look at a DM. Let me look at the DM. Yeah. So after the live ended, I went and checked my DM. She was like, Oh, hey, I'm a part of this management, and I'd like to sign you. Like, let's talk, set up a meeting. And I was like okay, you know, <laughs> I was a little nervous because I was just kind of just, I didn't really think about like kind of monetizing my account or kind of like, you know, taking it a step further. It was just like something fun to do. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Sinead did, you know, put me on a little bit. You know, she told me about the, like what, what her whole company was about, like uplifting black creators. So I know that's a big thing when you're like a black content creator, them not really like, you know, advocating for you and maybe like, maybe companies low on you but like she assured me that like we're going to get you the best deals that we can and we're also going to like you know advocate for you when it comes time to do so so yeah yeah a little funny story that's amazing Start though with a DM. yeah that's amazing so how has being with kensington gray impacted your career and your opportunities i think it definitely like put me where i need to be because i feel like i was kind of just like you know just just free balling. I was just on my own, just kind of doing whatever, any little deal or got. I just kind of like took it because I didn't, it didn't feel right to kind of be like, hey, y'all, maybe like, maybe pay me a little bit more. Or maybe like, you know, try and like, like do those little counter offers because it felt like, okay, I'm lucky they even reached out to me. Mm. But Kensington did like, you know, kind of put me out there, you know, put me on a lot of brands, radars, and just like, taught me how to like elevate my content and like which direction I can go with yeah. it and I'm very thankful for them because yeah. I feel like I definitely wouldn't be where I am today without them and they're Absolutely. like my first measurement I signed to and yeah I'm very grateful yeah I feel like one of the biggest aspects of your personality as a creator is your humor right like yeah. you're hilarious it's what you're known for Thank you. but you also create fashion and beauty and lifestyle content yeah. so I know that probably when you were 16 a lot of it was about just making funny videos for fun yeah. but now that you're like in your early 20s you're signed with this agency you're doing this for a living right mm -hmm. was there a point where you had to sit down maybe with your agency 
and kind of figure out like, how am I going to make myself marketable as a creator? And, and what were the strategies that you kind of came up with for that? Yeah, there's definitely like little strategy meetings they had where it was like, okay, like when you are like when this is your lifestyle and this is how, you know, you make your money and this is just like your main source of income, you do have to like be more consistent with it because mm. there was like when I was in high school, it wasn't a priority for me because I was still in school. So there'll be like months I'll go without posting. I was very like inconsistent. But since I graduated and I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. This want to focus on. They like were had these little like plans, these little like uh Things like, okay, post this many times a week and, like, you know, make sure you, like, tag brands and do this and that. Mm -hmm. And just, like, you know, just be yourself, be authentic because, like, a lot of times it's easy to get caught into the cookie cutter. Like, okay, let me just show the product, do this and that. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, you just got to put yourself in your content, too, because it's yours. That's right. what differentiates you from, like, other people, you being you. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. Speaking of, like, being authentic, how have you been able to incorporate your humor and your personality into content that's also fit for these brand deals and partnerships yeah i feel like when brands allow you to have like creative freedom be able to like you know present the product in a way that you know your audience will like receive it i feel like that's when i'm able to like mm -hmm. you know do what i want to do include the little jokes i want to include but sometimes there are times where it's like okay we got this brief you just gotta follow the brief and it's like okay but if there is like Creative freedom, of course, I'm gonna put a little joke in there too. There's been a couple of brand deals I've done where I've, you know, generally really liked it because I was able to like kind of like put my own twist on it, yeah. which I really appreciate when brands allow me to do so. Yeah, yeah. So you are Ghanaian, right? Yes. Yeah, but born in the United States. Yeah, I'm the only one in my family that's born in, really? in the United States. Yeah. Wow, that's interesting. And I feel like that's why I think that's why I'm called Ava because it's like a rendition oh. of Eve, Eve being the first woman, and I'm the first one born in America. That's very clever. Yeah. One thing about Africans, we're very clever. Yeah. So, okay, before we jump into this topic, I want to point out that both of us are second generation Africans. Mm -hmm. So for anyone who doesn't know, a second generation immigrant is someone who is born in a particular country, in our case, United States, yeah. but their parents are foreign born. So we're second generation Africans because we're born and raised in the United States, but our parents immigrated here from Africa. Yeah. So you make a lot of content that's centered around being African and having African parents. Yeah. Why do you think this content is important to make? I feel like there's not a lot of like African representation in media. And so like when there are those moments or those things that you know are common amongst like, you know, a lot of people who do have African parents or like are African is just like it just builds community and it just makes it feel like, oh, you know, people, like they get it. Like, yeah, it's a very different experience because like no, nobody understand. Like, do you use the bath, the bucket, the bucket, <laughs> the bucket and like cup? Nobody going to get it. So it's yeah. like it just feels so nice. Like with, uh, with somebody else like yes. gets the type of way it was growing up with African parents. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. No. Yeah. It's a very important form of representation mm -hmm. right because like second gener being a second generation african is a very niche underrepresented yeah. identity and i feel like we've had so many similar experiences growing up so i always love these videos i think they're just so not only funny but relatable and yeah. validating you know and it doesn't even have to be that deep like i've seen those videos where you're like you know when you're trying not to laugh when your african parent <laughs> is <stutter>. like yelling <laughs> at you <laughs> in their like native language or whatever mm -hmm. like things like that is just so specific and it's important for us to share these experiences with each other yeah. what are some other ways that you've tried to incorporate your Ghanaian culture into your content definitely just like I feel like just in my style in general I definitely have my culture's influence like mm -hmm. I love a head wrap as you can see because my mom she always wearing head wraps I like to like you know incorporate the Ghanaian colors the red, yellow, greens, the gold too. So I feel like it's just my way of living because like I'm Ghanaian and I'm like, I've been raised that way. That's my culture. So I'm always going to like, you know, show it in any way I can, whether it be like through what I wear or my content or just like, even even the food I eat, you know, I'm still, I'm still gonna eat my jollof rice, like no matter where I'm at, but just things like that. Yeah. Like, it's, it's me, it's like a part of me. Mm -hmm. And it's important for you to do that. Yeah. So you definitely do do this through your fashion, not only with like your African head wraps, but you mm -hmm. often wear like traditional African dresses I see you wearing. Mm -hmm. um, and you also overall have this very like earthy vibe to you that you're yeah. known for as well. <laughs> so can you talk a little bit more about how you've developed this like nature aesthetic and, yeah. and how it influences your style? I think 
I was also, I felt everything started to go up for me after I got out of high school. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. Like, after I graduated, that's when I started to actually, like, you know, figure out my style and figure out, like, you know, what I wanted to do. And so when I was just, like, you know, by myself, I'm like, okay, let me pick pieces that, like, me, myself, I like. Because mm -hmm. it's very easy to get influenced by, like, you know, what's trending now. But I realized all the things I bought when it was trending, I didn't wear anymore. So I was like, okay, let me focus on what I really like. So right. I just found myself gravitating more towards, like, you know, earthy colors and I also was in nature a lot during this time because after I graduated high school I just had like a bunch of spare time so I'll go like on walks nature walks I'll just lie in the grass so I just felt very like grounded and I feel like my my style started to like mimic that yeah and so building off of that I was able to just kind of like experiment start pulling elements from other things that I like really liked and like found inspiration from and then like that just continue to like evolve my style yeah I love that you pointed out like this discovery of your personal style because I feel like yeah. that's a, something that a lot of us go through in this generation and also just like graduating and it kind of is also in a way symbolic of like finding yourself and like mm -hmm. just not following the crowd so much yeah. like as much as we used to when we were in high school yeah. yeah for sure I feel like you also have a very consistent style like in terms of colors and accessories so what are some of the key details that would make an outfit personal to you definitely like jewelry I'm really big on jewelry I love to stack combine you know just to mix and match my jewelry. Mm -hmm. So that's a really big thing for me because it like that just accessorizes the fit because the fit can be really like, you know, mm -hmm. plain and basic, basic. But once I add the yeah. jewelry, it's it. And also like statement belts. I love a statement belt. And like, of course, my head wrap. Mm -hmm. I love a head wrap. And, or just a scarf in general because I'll even like just tie a scarf just around my hair. Or you can, you can even put on your waist, you know? Yeah. I just think those are like, the top three for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love that. It shows. So another thing I really like about your platform is how you use it to advocate for some of the issues going on around the world. Mm -hmm. So how do you navigate incorporating serious topics into a platform that's known for its humor and its kind of lighthearted content? Yeah, I feel like I realize when it comes to like social media, there are the like, you know, humorous, you know, playful aspects of it, but it also is a place where people do go to get informed and there are like creators who do focus on like, you know, those serious topics. And I feel like for me, I just like uplifting those voices. Those who do have those accounts that do focus on like those issues, I like to like direct people to go there mm -hmm. to get like valid resources and information and also learn more about the topic or issues that are going on. Mm -hmm. Cause it's very, it's very easy to get misinformed so once you find like a site or like a account that does inform people that is like valid, yeah. it's good to like direct people to like those accounts. Yeah, for sure. Because it is a place to like, you know, have fun and stuff, but also it's a place to like get educated if you mm -hmm. do seek that. Yeah, and a place for creators like you to spread awareness. It's very important. Yeah. How much of a responsibility do you feel as a content creator to speak up about world issues? Because a lot of creators feel like that's not really their job. Mm -hmm. I think as a creator, you do have a bigger reach than the average person. So that's why it's like something as simple as just like sharing a link or like directing people to like a certain account or page, it is impactful. But even like, even like if you're not a content creator too, it is important to like talk about world issues because they're going to affect you in one way or another, or even in ways that you don't know it like affects you until like later on, but yeah. it's like it's going on in the world, so it's good to at least like know about it mm -hmm. and be educated. Yeah, for sure. I like yeah. that you pointed out that it's not just a content creator's job to post about it and spread awareness and talk about these mm -hmm. things. Like, it doesn't really matter how much reach you have. You have a network of yeah, people you have that a you voice. can. Yeah, you have a voice at the end of the day, and I think we need more creators with that mindset of like. You know, I may not have asked for this responsibility, but I have this huge platform now. Mm -hmm. So how can I use it to help others? Exactly. So I think that's really great. Um, to close off this interview, I want to ask you, what is some advice that you would give to any aspiring content creators who look up to you? I think just be authentic and be yourself, because like I said, there's only one there's only one you. And if you're just trying to follow what somebody else is doing, that's not you. So just like staying true to yourself and you know being consistent because consistency is key because the times where I've had fallout with consistency I, I reap the repercussions yeah but just like you know keep on doing you and just don't get stuck about like 
the followers and like the views and the likes, but just focus on content that makes you happy regardless of like how well it does. Because at the end of the day, it's your account, it's your platform, it's what you want to do. So. Yeah. I love that. That's some great advice, and it shows in everything that you do. Thank you, Thank you so much for coming in today. Make sure to keep up with Ava on all platforms. Everything will be linked in the description. And as always, thank you so much for watching How She Did It. Make sure to tune in next week for another episode. Mm -hmm.